Hey everyone, so SolarWinds had a supply chain attack. I made an animated network diagram to kind of show you what the attack does and the impact. And then from there, hopefully you'll develop a plan of action to patch up your um, weaknesses and identify any gaps in your security posture. All right, so let's get started. So SolarWinds, the, uh, the name of this attack it comes in many different forms depending on the group that names it. Uh, could be Solarigate, Sunburst, UNC 2452. Um, so if you see any of these names, they're all related to the same attack. Okay, and what happens is Orion um, monitoring and management, uh, you know, software. Ha basically, it's an on-premise server you would install this uh, application on and it would download updates, right? That's the normal method. It would just download updates, but there was uh, the adversary or the, uh, the bad actor compromised that update service and was able to add malicious payload to that package, and it was a DLL file they added it to. That DLL file, um, businesslayer.dll, basically runs a code and it executes. So, but there was actually many mechanisms to evade sandboxing and AV protection. So it actually fingerprints or tries to identify um, what type of you know AV um, you're running, how it's being blocked to try to circumvent those blocks, okay? So, and it also will lay dormant for about two weeks before it even does anything. So it just kind of hangs out and doesn't really do anything for about two weeks. Kind of sounds like something we, we're experiencing right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it, it avoids sandboxing, evades AV, and just lays dormant. So once... It meets meets that timer or that you know that timer expires, then it would try to do something. So it's going to go and again, like I said, try to identify your AV and your also check for connectivity. It also generate generates a uh, uh, what they call a DGA or a dynamic generated domain or um, DNS generated algorithm. I forget what it was, but Basically, it will generate a random DNS name, and it wants to see how you respond to it. And based on how you respond, will determine how that payload acts. So there's a list of pre-configured IP ranges, and most of them are private addresses, that if it sees that, which is very similar to a sandbox environment, it won't run. And it just uh, it won't execute. That way, it won't, it, it would be very very difficult to go, difficult to discover. But if it is able to resolve its domain name, which is avsvmcloud.com, and that C name record, then it will send a uh, HTTP REST API call to its C two, and it will make it look like it's talking to uh, talking to the Orion Improvement Program, and it will actually look like that REST call. When you look at the JSON content, it actually looks very similar to it, but they'll pepper in commands uh, in the response back so that it can execute those. It can execute so the basically the server can execute uh, the responses that you know has those peppered in commands. The jobs that it could do um, are transfer files, execute files, profile the system, reboot machine, disable system services. So it can execute these jobs uh, based off um, what is requested by the uh, C2. So now that you know, you know how that machine was compromised, let's go a step further and see what happened now. So now that the payload has been executed, we need to harvest the credentials. So first, they're going to enumerate the users and then determine administrator privileges on the on-premise server. Then they're going to try to gain access or global admin access um, or even try to generate their own SAML tokens. They're going to then try to make lateral movements 
and try to leverage those administrator credentials or those tokens to impersonate the user or that privileged user um, within your organization and try to make those movements. And here's another thing. They're not using the same credentials. They try to uh, change it and also um, so that it doesn't kind of surface any alerts. So they try to use the right credentials for the right purpose. And also they are trying to discover on-premise um, resources as well as any resources in the cloud. To establish any kind of persistence, they're going to um, build a federation and try to establish that trust uh, with their own certificate. They're also going to add their own certificates, maybe build some OAuth app for single sign-on, or even build a service principal name. And now with that being built, they would link that to your mail so that they could just see your mail records and do some reconnaissance there. So when you're trying to establish persistence and you're doing this form of reconnaissance where you're looking at the mail records, you're not really trying to get caught, right? So, and, and remember, a privileged user doesn't always have to be an admin. It could also be a person that has the level of access to make a wire transfer, right? Or um, have access to other areas or have access to uh, confidential data. So I don't really know what they were looking for, but um, you know, having access to SolarWinds and this particular service, you're going to get a lot of access, you know, almost God mode. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it, it's a pretty bad attack. All right, guys, so Microsoft Defender for Endpoint already comes with sort of executive summaries or reports about these particular campaigns. So I'm going to show you where to go to access that in the future. If you don't have Defender for Endpoint, at least you get a glimpse of this particular feature. So go on the icon here, go to Threat Analytics, and in this list here, it's a list of the campaigns that we've built executive summaries for. So if you see here, we have Sophisticated Actor Attacks FireEye, as well as the Solarigate Supply Chain Attacks. We've got really two reports that are kind of similar around the, you know, what's going on. So let's go ahead and read the full analysis support regarding the Solarigate attack. But before I do that, remember the overview is just going to give you an idea if you have any devices with matching IOCs related to this campaign. So when you click on the full analysis report, you're going to get the executive summary, a similar diagram I made, as well as matching IOCs you can use as well. What you also get is sort of the uh, execution of how that particular malware was executed. And again, it was a embedded malicious payload in the update service that pushed the package to the server where the server loaded the DLL file which then wouldn't execute after two weeks. So it was a pretty uh, interesting malware that was really smart and was trying to evade a lot of uh, sandboxing and AV tactics. You get some C2, you get the uh, sort of the objectives and um, what was happening, which really um, was similar to the, what I kind of covered in the diagram and mitigation strategies. I'll go over that real quick. Let me just go over the rest here. So the MITRE attack technique is observed is really the T numbers associated to the MITRE technique around the particular phase. So, you know, when it comes to the um, initial access phase, then it was the adversary injected malicious code into the application library so that it could be delivered onto the endpoint. And then when the code was downloaded, it was then executed, which then the command and control um, would be, it would actually talk to command and control after that you know, two week period. Uh, advanced hunting. So take this, right? You can take this query and put it into your advanced hunting uh, section. And then from here, you wanna paste that query run it and then you get a result, right? You can also modify it and save that query and then you know make it into alert. So if you have your own stuff and kind of just use this as a, um, as a template to then modify and, and make your own uh, alerts from this, okay? 
So the mitigation strategies you want to do, um, I'm just going to go over the big stuff off the top of my mind. Um, you definitely want to update solar winds. You definitely want to disconnect it um, prior to, um, you know, you, you want to disconnect it and then you want to remove any residual malware off of it. And then you want to uh, update it with a trusted, you know, with a trusted service and trusted repository. And then, you know, make sure you follow the SolarWinds hardening guidance, which I'll include in the link in the description, but it's also here. You need to harden your firewall, harden your AV. There's a number of security mechanisms that come with Defender that doesn't come enabled by default, so you want to turn those on. Things like attack surface reduction rules, application whitelisting, um, exploit protection. These are things that will harden the endpoint to prevent this type of activity from happening. For the identity portion for the lateral movement, you want to harden those SAML tokens as well as leverage uh, Defender for Identity, which will give you the sort of information around the authentication in regards to on-premise activity, right? This is very similar to Azure ATP or ATA if you are familiar with those tools. You also want to do a SAW or Secured Access Workstation or we'll call it Privileged Access Workstation, leverage just-in-time protection so that you know if you want to access a workstation you have to go through some approval process or only whitelist your IP and then it's removed. Uh, it's like a temporary access. Just enough administration is only giving that particular user the roles it needs to get the job done on that endpoint. Um, what else? Mm, certificates. So, oh yeah, make sure you're monitoring your certificates somehow. Um, there are some services we have that can help you with there. And uh, Microsoft Cloud App Security could also help you with identifying these anomalous behavior. If you're seeing login from one spot, but then you're seeing a you know a login from another location, that could be like impossible travel, right? You also want to set up Honey token accounts or Honey admin accounts, where you could set up Tripwire so that if they log in with this account that you wanna you wanna get alerted on, right? So you kind of set up Tripwires or ways to detect if an adversary's trying to, you know, use a credential they're not supposed to, right? When they're enumerating your user list and they see this, you know, enticing account and they use it, it'll trigger an alert, basically. The same premise could be done for um, tokens or secrets, where you put these secrets on GitHub and they're called canary tokens where uh, it'll trigger those alerts as well. So, All right, guys, so hopefully I was able to educate you about the SolarWinds supply chain attack and you're more informed. And yeah, just let me know if there's any questions you have. Please comment below. Please click on the subscribe button and have a good day and stay safe.